It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Abu Kaobuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. It's been a very, very um, busy week in, in the news, uh, whether it's politics, the economy, or whatever else you uh, like to read up about Nigeria. I think having the news in the past week has been the drama between the EFCC and uh, the former governor of Kogi State, who has been declared wanted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Um, he's been wanted for investigations uh, with regards to uh, his time as governor of Kogi State, a lot of drama played out when he was, uh, there was an attempted arrest uh, of him. Uh, the present governor apparently or allegedly whisked him away and now he's declared wanted. I don't know how uh, that is supposed to help. Uh, a lot of people have wondered if he has security personnel attached to him. Isn't it their job as security personnel to you know, have him arrested. But we did hear that the Inspector General has withdrawn those security personnel instead of ordering them to <laughs> effect this arrest. So it's, it's, it was quite a dramatic week, but we'll be watching the coming days to see how that plays out. And uh, the EFCC seems quite intent on pursuing this to the very end. Uh, but of course, the economy continues to be a huge talking point for a lot of Nigerians. Uh, inflation, and especially food inflation, continues to skyrocket. And every single Nigerian you meet today seems to know the daily rates of the Naira with, uh, uh, as it exchanges with the US dollar. And we're going to be having our conversation here on that today. I'm joined here in the studio by Adeola Ogunbodede. Thanks a lot for being here today. Thank you so much. Yes, um, the last, I want to believe, two, three weeks seem quite exciting for a lot of Nigerians. Um, it started looking like the Naira was fighting back. <laughs> like they say on social media, got to about a thousand. Uh, even news filtered that it got about 980 in some places. Yeah. And then on Friday, we saw something happening again. It started going up, it declines, started again. Yeah. And I think uh, the last time of us saw was about a thousand to a thousand two fifty. We're not sure exactly what the rates are over the weekend because uh, it's not fully officially monitored. So I guess everyone is waiting for tomorrow to see what so happens. But what's what's happened on Friday. There's been allegations that um, the CBN governor came out and said he wasn't defending the Naira, spoke very well at the World Bank meeting, and the next day this happened. Do you think his uh, speech had anything to do with this? No, basically, no. Um, I think what he said was true. Um, the basic fact, even of this, is that, um, especially even since um, the clampdown on Binance and other, uh, Binance and other cryptocurrency agencies, um, we've actually been able to find a way to curb the rate at which the Naira was going up. And, um, and I think as a result of also of some of the challenges, because there are some things that spiked even that issue at the beginning. And those were some of the unpaid uh, bills which the CBN have been able to. So uh, gradually, we've been able to have a situation whereby, um, uh, what we call it now, uh, uh, level of trust is being garnered even for the Nigerian currency. And as a result of that, people who were up, having a party before in bringing in funds, were actually uh, started bringing them in. And as a result of the uh, inflow of, of Forex into the economy, we actually saw those things coming down. Because even eventually, let me, even, let me just tell you, actually there's about three parts even to it. One was the inflow. The second was CBN policy. The third was the, the decision by some people not no more to, uh, to import things. So a whole lot of things actually from those three parts actually contributed to the, um, the increment, uh, the, um, the, um, strengthening. the strengthening of the, of, of the Nigerian Naira. But um, what happened towards the end of, of last week, actually I would say it's as a result of market forces. forces. By tomorrow, we actually will get to know what the issue is. But that's the fear that other people have because the exchange rates, right, when they are let to, to, to be dictated by market forces are highly sort of dictated by speculation, right? So people have, there was a lot of confidence at least starting to build yes. in the Naira, which was seen in how the strengthening was happening. When this starts and people now start, quote unquote, hoarding again, isn't that going to be a problem? Because people are now saying, oh, hold your dollar, is that started going up again, you know, which then might if affect, you know, at the end of the day, this is a very layman's explanation of what I'm trying to, or what Nigerians think okay, of what is happening. Uh, basically, I would say it is not about hoarding. Because if you hoard, with the current policy of the CBN, if it's allowed to, to materialize, you will lose. But I think what transpired towards the end of last week was uh, the third part of what I said, 
Some people actually stopped importing as a result of the, um, the uh, challenges in the, in the forex market, market. So it's possible that those people who have stopped are now coming into the market. To, so by tomorrow, that is by tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, we'll actually get to know what is actually causing the spike. Is it because the issue of me wanting to hold? Basically, if I hold, I will not get uh, much because, because of the current policy uh, framework of the CBN, you are actually going to lose because um, a whole lot of things are working in favor of the CBN as of today. That got refinery has started. So that means some of the things, some of the cash we use to uh, import diesel, we're going to, that is going to, uh, not going to be uh, used any longer. We're not going to require a request for it. Some of the money, um, EPIs came on board. Some of the dollar we need to, to purchase airline, we, have, we don't need them. So a whole lot of things are actually working in favor of, of Serbia. And, and the third part is some of the people who are using alternate um, uh, cryptocurrency and platforms before, to, to make a transaction. They are no more using that. So a whole lot of funds are being spared, even in, the, in favor of CBN. So if you are going to hoard, you will lose. So I believe that maybe some, um, um, some um, uh, elements of uh, personnel who have not been active in the Forex market before were the ones that came into market toward the end of the week. And by tomorrow, they will come, um, the whole thing will become there. Before we get into you know, the fiscal side of things and how you know, all of this doesn't seem to affect the price of goods and commodities in general. I want to touch on something that also broke towards the end of last week by the IMF. I think it was on the same Friday as well, talking about the fact that at the end of this year, Nigeria will be the fourth, will be ranked fourth uh, based on GDP on the continent, down from first. Yeah. Uh, at our peak, we were what about, uh, our GDP was about billion, $5, billion $30 dollars. billion. Dollars. Yep. Now, because of the depreciation of the Naira, all the policies over the years with regards to importation and just the shrinking of the economy is down to $253 billion, ranking us behind Egypt, South Africa, and Algeria. This is a reality that a lot of Nigerians are maybe not ready to handle because yeah. our egos have always been, oh, we're the largest economy on the continent. Every time you watch a government official speaking, it's one of the first things they open with, oh, we're the largest economy. But this is the reality now. And... You wonder, how did we get here? How did we let ourselves get here? And is this our new reality or is this temporary? Now, basically, that's when you consume. That is actually what is happening to the country now. You know, basically, in economics, we have micro, we have macro. You understand? Micro looks at the individuals at the lowest rung. Then macro looks at everything in aggregate. So when you actually look at what is happening at the general level in the economy of, of this country, you actually see that it is what is happening at the macro, micro level. That is at individual level. For example, if you have fund and you are only spending the fund, you are not finding alternative way of making money to replenish what you are spending. Gradually, you are going to run out of what you have and you're going to be poor. But if you find a way to continually, continually replenish what you have, then gradually you will leave the level where you are to grow maybe from a multi-millionaire to become a multi-billionaire. You get me? So the same thing applies in this country. We consume everything. Every, see what has been happening since the beginning of this administration. They've shared one trillion almost every month. Sometimes almost two trillion. But we have not seen any effect across state levels. Across our states, no effect. Even at the federal government level, we have been calculating 400 billion, 200 billion, 20 billion coming to states every month. But we have not seen what they have done. So when you consume, when you eat, when we, because eventually the little palliative that comes our way, we spend it. And that is the challenge we have. And unfortunately, until we go to the level where which we become productive in such a way that we begin to generate revenue, via Forex and Co., the economy of Nigeria will still begin to go down. The reason why Naira is being bastardized today is that we have eaten our future. I was even surprised when it was record, reported that Buhari administration have sold the, the, uh, our crude oil ahead. You collected the money ahead for the crude that we have not even produced. And as a result of that, the current administration is not even generating any revenue from crude oil sales. They are only giving out what? Because they have collected the fund. So that is the challenge we have, sir. So there is no revenue, and the, our, our productive capacity is low. 
And as a result of that, Naira is going down. By the time it becomes 1,500, 2,000, you understand, vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, because everything is calculated in dollar rates. So until we actually improve the Naira, which is the basis at which we are going now, if, if Dagote should work, then that means we're going to save some fund. If airpiece should work, that means we're going to save some fund. And if all other Nigerian organizations are going to also come up to also participate either in agri in other in other spheres, then we're going to actually see something think, coming up for the economy. I think it's very scary that you know the Nigerian economy is almost the size it was at the start of the Fourth Republic in 1999. Yep. Based on this number we're hearing now, yes. And we are about 80 million more people now than we were then. You know, it just gives you context of how scary things are. We're almost the size of where when the military left, with eight, about 80 million more people now. Yep. Still, it's very mind-boggling. How, how, what's the way out of this? Is, this? is there any way to start fixing this? I know everybody says production, production, but these sound very long-term. And a lot of the issues Nigerians are grappling with now are very immediate. What, what, what's, what does it look like in the near future? No, basically, what I, I actually was, um, uh, I was taking that back, actually, because when I began to look at the population of the economy, and I actually see what we produce, that is our per capita uh, GDP, you understand? But it's, by the time you actually look at what individuals produce in an economy in a particular year, we actually see that it is below our, our capacity. It starts from the civil service, down to, to the, if at all, we're going to see any calculation whatsoever that we're going to see. Apart from what crude oil is giving to us in this economy, there is nothing much that we can actually refer to, except for private sector that is helping this economy. So what I want think we should do, first of all, is to give capacity to our youth. More than 50% of, of uh, the country population are the, those in the range, range of youth. That you get me? Those between 13 and 35 or 40 years. So we should give capacity to them. They can be much more productive than they are now. Many of our youths are wasting away. So the government should focus on them. And I thank God for what the Ministry of ICT, um, if, uh, Innovation and Digital Economy is doing by uh, giving capacity to 3 million youths by training them. That is not enough. It's good. The Ministry of Agri should also work in that regard. NYSA should work in that regard to give capacity to our youths. Apart from the student loan, student loan will allow, allow students to go to school and come back, but we should give a capacity to our youths in such a way that they are productive. You know, sir, do you know one thing that happened during Jonathan um, uh, administration? It came, you know, by the time they were trying to rebase the economy through Madame Okonjo Iweala, they went into the entertainment sector and they brought it into GDP. And that, that caused our GDP at that period in time to grow. So we could go much into that area. In that time, before Jonathan left, he wanted to invest more in the creative industry, give them more loan to, so that everybody can be much more productive. But eventually, uh, the, the administration followed, allowed that thing to, 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 to go down. We can go back into that because we know most of our youth, they can do a whole lot of things for the economy. Then number two, it's one of the things they are, the current government is doing. They said they are giving seven, um, one and thirty something billion to seventy industries in this country, but they have not started, they have not done anyone. They said one billion or so to each um, industry as, as a loan, but now they have not done even almost a year of this administration. Nothing has been done, so they could give capacity to our industries. Many companies today are laying off staff. The reason is that the current economic challenge is biting hard on them. So what do we need to do? the government should come in to give capacity to these companies so that they can employ more and let them be more productive. Then the final one is our civil service. We need to allow the civil service to be more productive because we use them as a baseline for productivity in this economy. Most times when you go to ministries, everyone is like loafing out and just playing and everyone should be made to work. You get me, sir? So that by the time everybody is engaged, by the time we actually have productive resources, which, we can, be, which can be calculated going forward, and I think, I'm sorry, the final one was what the NBS did, Nigeria Bureau of Statistics, when they decided to say, okay, they recalculated unemployment rates as a situation whereby uh, you don't have job. That if per adventure you still have one hour or two hour work you do per day, you are, you are employed. That was what brought about from 33% unemployment rate to 4 or 5% that is currently what they have on ground. So if you have that, if you have done that rebasement, I'll be rebasing of such, then you should give capacity to those youths and be able to see if we can calculate the productivity of these youths. 
By the time we actually, there are many things that are not calculated in this economy, sir. By the time they are calculated, you will actually be surprised that we are doing more than we are currently doing. A lot of those are, you know, just very, people will say those are just sort of data statistics that a regular man on the streets can never feel. Because you go around the country, at least your area, you see how many young people are just sitting, loafing around, doing nothing. Sure. Which brings me to my very final point. I need you to answer that as quickly as possible, what I touched on earlier. You know, <clears throat> we had a president who came in promising a lot of things and saying nobody should feel bad for him because he campaigned for this job yep. and he's going to fix this country. He please wants to make us a trillion dollar, dollar economy. economy. We, are, we are regressing as it is now. The Naira was strengthening. Inflation was going up. They are saying, no, this is monetary policy. Fiscal policy will handle their own. A lot of people don't care about these things. You know, we want to see the results. Why are we not seeing the results yet? Things are getting more expensive every day you go to the market. But we hear dollar is falling. Bread is more expensive tomorrow. Why are these things not making sense to people? And why are we not feeling in real time these promises that we made? Yeah, I think um, the when President Tinubu was coming on board, he, under, maybe from my own view, he thought he knew everything. But by the time he got in, he, the reality actually came to him. So, and that was why when every step that he has taken from day one, you know, the fuel uh, subsidy remover was abrupt. Had it been that, okay, because of time. So, had it not been that he took that step at that very particular period in time, maybe some of the challenges we saw wouldn't have happened. So, basically, I would say to the president, he actually under, um, or that scored, or under whatever, prepared. Because from his, he thought he knew everything, but he did not know, he didn't know. That. Now, he came out the other time to actually confess that, I'm sorry, I didn't know everything, but I'm also learning on the job. So he thought he knew everything at the beginning, but when he got to see the reality, he, the whole thing actually became. So one thing he was, he now had to start off to begin to handle them one by one. That is one. Then number two, the step he has taken at the very beginning was a step he ought not to have taken. It was that step that, that brought about all the other challenges that we, we saw. Normally for him, what he would have done is for him to retrace his step and, and correct. But retracing his step is also dangerous in this economy because in Nigeria, whatever goes up, most of the time does not come down. And already we saw, we saw that in the FPFLA and also with the NEPA, ABI, PhD or whatever like that is coming <laughs> on board. So a whole lot of things actually coming. So that's part. So, and, and the third thing was that we also saw as a result of uh, the removal of, um, what is the name now? Subsidy. No, no, the subsidy is one. The second thing they did, a blabberization of the market of uh, Forex. So as okay, a result, yeah. of, that also caused a whole lot of challenge. On the, and the third one was the subsidy that he just removed from electricity. A whole lot of issues. Yeah. And, but unfortunately, unfortunately, he has said he's trying to manage it. And thank God that his team, All they're right. actually trying to work from the back to correct it. When, when they ought to have worked from the front All right. to follow it. Well, I don't know if the hungry Nigerian has a lot of patience for, you know, <laughs> him to learn on the job. But I mean, we are all hoping that he does his job and But basically, I better. trust God that by the, by that, that all of before the end of his fourth year, Nigeria will be better if he's following this route. All right. <laughs> well, I'm sure we all hope so as well. We're going to take a quick break now and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Thanks a lot, man. Welcome back. I'm joined now in the studio by multi-talented. And I don't use that very lightly because he actually is multifaceted in the entertainment industry. Um, Lawal Michael Nasiru Bolaji, but you know him as Nas Boy. Did I miss any of your names? No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Only you four names. How's it been, man? How's it going? And, uh, um, I just released this song, so it's been... Very hectic for me. Yeah, because I wanted to say congratulations, but there's too many things to even congratulate you for. So let's just have some context to everything, because I think a lot of us got introduced to you as a skit maker, right? Yes, Which please. you've done now for I want to be about ten years, if I'm. If I'm ah, right. is he up to that? When did you start off doing? I'm a legend with that too. <laughs> when did you start off? No, I started off. I started making skits in 2020. 2020. Before that, what were you doing? Oh, I used to be a musician. Okay, so it was music first. Yeah. Music. Okay. Started, when did you start music? Two eight. 2000 and yeah, two eight. That's when I started recording. Okay. Two, two seven. That's when I started record professionally. Okay. Yeah. So I started recording. I recorded for a while. I got signed to renowned Nollywood actress Montola Jaladi Akende. Okay. I was here for like three years as a musician. Right. Then sometime in 2017, 
uh, I decided to start photography. So you did music for how long now? Uh, I was still recording while I was doing photography. Okay. I was still recording. But, so at some point, I decided to face skits. It's not like I, it's not like I wanted skits anyway. My <laughs> friends were like, you're funny now. Why not just try this whole skit thing? I'm like, nah. I'm very shy. I used to be very shy from a scale of 1 to 10, like 11. <laughs> so my friends were like, do it, do it, do it. So in 2020, I decided to try. And then I wasn't even trying to make skits. I was only trying to get Davido's attention for my music. So I started off mimicking Davido. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were doing music, what kind of music were you doing? And when did Amos, what year were you signed by? 2014. 2014 was yes. when you got signed. Yes. And what kind of music were you doing? Why was it, why do you think, I mean, things didn't work out like you wanted at the uh, time? So I think, I think it was because of where I was. I was okay. in Port Harcourt. Okay. Yeah, so it's not like I used to even push my music. So I was just one young guy who was recording in his studio. With How did she see you? How did she find you? Twitter. Oh, okay. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So and then I could remember a blog posted my song. Okay. Yeah, and uh, she said, uh, I, need, I need to see the person who sang the song. Then she came into my DM and she told me to come to Lagos. Okay. Yeah. So was that what made you move to Lagos? I didn't move exactly. Um, I was with her. I came to stay with her. Then I stayed somewhere around too. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so it was just grind, grind, grind. Right? I was with her for like three years. Yeah. Were you doing Afro beats, Afro pop, Afro R&B? Too. What Afro were you doing? Too. Afro beat. Afro beats. Like Afro beats. It's been Afro beats since. Yeah. So now, this, was it because that didn't work out that you decided to start transitioning to skip making? Yeah, so I wasn't going to do that forever now. I, I needed <laughs> to give my sense, and myself sense because I was already getting old. So I decided to do something that I like that would be giving me money. You know, as an upcoming artist, it's always very hard to make money. That was so the I, hardest. Yeah. So I decided to do something that I like that would give me money. So I decided to delve into um, photography. Mm. So, okay, yeah. photography came before. Yeah, photog no, no. Photography came in 2017, 18. Okay. So I no, did it came before like, skit making is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, before skit making. Yeah. So I started, I started seeing small money. Okay. Yeah, then they said you are funny and you decided to... Yeah, my friends. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was funny. <laughs> I, I think I, I've, seen, I've seen a couple of those Davido. Yeah, sort of, yeah. So um, that's how I started. Okay. That's how I started. Then did, I, I, I got Davido's attention, yeah. Uh, what happened then? Oh, with so him? I could remember... I, I didn't even make too much videos. I made the first video me making the video, uh, it got traction. I made the second one, and next up, I saw it on big blogs. Shout out to Tunde Ednot. That was where I saw the um, video, like a ah, small video that I made. <laughs> and next up, I saw that the video commented on the video, and he said, this boy, no worry, hang will touch you. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I sent, I sent the message to Tunde. I'm like, ah, am I in trouble? He said, no, 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 David is just joking. And next up, I got to Lagos. I was always, I was always speaking on Peruzi as the David. Peruzi Alpha! <laughs> <laughs> so I was always speaking on Peruzi. Mm -hmm. So everybody said Peruzi was going to beat you. Yeah. So I linked up with Peruzi <laughs> first. Peruzi was super cool. And said, David wants to meet you. Actually, I'm like, me? Oh, let's go. So we got to David's house. It was all love. We made videos. Uh, that's how I that's how I got here, and at some point I did those I didn't do too much of it. I think I did about six videos and that was it. I knew that Nigerians uh, you know now they'll get tired, yeah. so I decided to switch. <laughs> and lucky me, I would, I already had like characters that I was already working on. Yeah. So that's how I switched and I started making other skits. So at this point now, when you started me making the video, mm. did you already know you wanted to be a skit maker? Or was it just a Davido thing for the time being? It was just a Davido thing for the time being. So how come you had material? So while you were doing Davido, you started making other plans, is what you're saying? Not exactly. <laughs> but then, I used to make my friends laugh. Okay. I used to make my friends With laugh. Like different so, characters yeah, different and whatnot. Different characters. I was that guy who could do the whole Ibu thingy, I'm Yoruba, yeah. so I could mimic an Ibu. I thought man. you were Ibu for a while. Yeah, <laughs> so I could do the whole mimicking of an Igbo man, I can mimic an Aquaibon person perfectly, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's explore the options. So that's how I started exploring. It's not like I had materials anywhere. What, have, what, what about 2020 was pivotal? Was it the lockdown? What made it so instrumental to you lockdown, launching your lockdown, career? Lockdown, lockdown. Yeah. Because I could remember I was in a village for about a month. So that's when I started you know, everybody... Too like, so much say, free time. It'd be like, say, we in the board. So, because they explore. <laughs> so that's how I started. I, I was in a village somewhere in Aquaibom. I went to my friend's village during lockdown. So that's how I started making videos. Yeah. So when you now started doing things outside of the Davido um, mm. impersonations, when did you realize you were onto something? Was it a particular video or a character 
that you feel like mm. changed things for you? So the good thing is, you know some people, right? They dwell on the character for too long that when they want to switch, people start looking at them like, what are you trying to do? So I didn't do the DVD thing for too long. I didn't do it for too long. I did like four or five videos. So even when I switched, I just made people laugh. Yeah. Right. And I saw that, I saw that people started realizing that, ah, this guy is more. So then I decided to show them more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of us didn't realize there was music before this, yeah, you know? know, and then, yeah. so when you dropped a single after, this was last year, right? Yeah. Umbrella wasn't the first single. What was the first there single? There was a single before Umbrella, Lover Boy. Okay. Yeah, got, oh, yes, there was Lover Boy. I got bullied. <laughs> How so? I got bullied. How do you mean? Right. You know now, so I dropped Lover Boy and everybody said, majority of the comments I saw, my friend, go and fetch your comedy girl, get out of this. So I felt really horrible. You know when you are doing music scenes, I trying to tell these people that, no, I can actually sing. And everybody say, go, he looks funny singing. Ah, this guy is a funny guy. And, and I got depressed. I'm not even going to lie. But I decided to give you one more shot. Just one more shot. One more shot. Yeah. Do you think it was the music or do you think it was people's perception? It wasn't the music, I promise you. It wasn't. Because even when I released Umbrella, right, I still saw comments. People yeah. were still trying to bully me. Twitter. <laughs> People were still trying to bully me. So then I'm like, yo, I'm coming into this place with everything. I'm going for everybody. You must listen to my music. So that's how I went wild on the promotion. And then I saw that people started saying, this guy should actually face music and leave comedy. I'm like, <laughs> see you on that. <laughs> so is that really the first love? So yes, because music or from what I'm hearing now, skip making was just sort of a side, part, it's side. Side, passing time yeah. to what you really want to do. Yes, so if I'm getting you right, does this mean that skip, skip making is going to slowly fade away from no, it will not. It the won't. identity of your brand? No, it won't. It won't. So because I think skip making is a tool to push my music. Okay. So I will never leave it. Yeah. You understand? I might get too busy not to like uh, put videos out there every now and then, but one thing is certain, I'll keep making people laugh. Yeah. Do you, do you ever worry that there are people who will never take you seriously with music? No, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Actually, I don't care. And I, not everybody should take me seriously now. Not everybody go listening to my music yeah. at the end of the day. So the ones that I can, the ones that can listen to my music, I'm fine. I'm fine. How did the one day cool conversation happen? Uh, so because I went alone on the first track, I felt that was one of the reasons why people didn't really take me serious. Yeah. Right. So when I recorded Umbrella, um, I decided to reach out to different artists for a collaboration, right? I got slid by one or two, but... Um, slide as they didn't take you seriously, or yeah, they didn't did you pay me. and they didn't show up? Yeah, no, no, I didn't pay. I didn't pay. I was even asking to pay, but some people were like, you know. So one day's one, um, I was at an event. One day is somebody that I, like, I love one day so much. It is one day, two face, the band. I love this man like so much, yeah. right? So one day I was in, I already had Umbrella. I went to a show, right? And I saw one day call. And one day call was like, come, come here, this guy. I like you. I love your skits. I'm like, hey. <laughs> you don't know what you're about to do. <laughs> <laughs> you like me? Oh, well. So I didn't, even, I didn't push to get his number. I didn't push to get his number. I don't move like that. I just, I had to be careful, right? So I saw one of his guys. Isama, the guy was quite close. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I think I should get this guy's number. So I got the guy's number and we started communicating. I told the guy that, yo, I would love to see you. Can I take you out for, for brunch or something? Then the guy said, yeah. So we went out and I played my music for him. And I said, bro, this is the journey. I'm actually a musician. And the guy's like, wait, these are your songs? I said, yes. <laughs> so I said, I would love to do a collaboration with Wendy Cole. And he said, ah, Wendy Cole is not recording at the moment. But you know what? Just give me this particular song. You see this one? Give me this one and another one. You understand? I'll just try and play for Wendy Cole. So two weeks later, I was somewhere filming, and I got a call from a random number, then I picked. Nice boy! So you start sing like this? <laughs> I, I went with this. Said, I want the call, they come to Nigeria tomorrow, come, you'll come with me for apartment. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, I went to the studio, I went to meet Wandy Kula, I was super excited, and Wandy said, eh, I don't really like the song. I don't really like him. I mean, this year I like the song, but I don't like him. And then I was heartbroken, but then I was so happy I was with Wandeko. We took pictures, and when I was about to leave, then I love language now, honey. He played the song. I was like, yo! <laughs> Made it super easy for me, and that's yeah. how we got the tune. Awesome. So, is, is there an album in the works? or? Yeah, there's going to be an EP in a month time. 
Okay. Yeah, that's going to be an EP. Lots of collaborations. If you can yes. help me, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so people have not taken you more seriously. I do artists. not feel. I swear, <laughs> as in, bless God, bless God. Awesome, man! Congratulations. And you do some acting as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done movies. Yeah. I have like two movies on Netflix. There's Lockdown, there's Passport. I have one show now in the cinema, Saving on a Man. Saving on a Man. I'll be full package, bro. That's why I said at the beginning, <laughs> you're multi-talented and everything. <laughs> now, one thing I've always um, found interesting is you have a lot of these parts of entertainment, you know, comedians, musicians, actors. Yeah. Um, skit makers are almost sort of distinct from comedians, mm -hmm. especially the stand-up guys, right? And I find that a lot of you are very close with each other. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe because you guys work heavily with collaborations, right? Yeah, we don't have a choice. Um, do you see that continuing? Because it's still a very new industry, right? And uh, how do you see that playing out in basically just how you guys work and, you know, develop an industry that a lot of people still feel like is not sustainable? Yeah, if you know what be, I mean. It's going to be here for a long time. Because of the fact that, well, it's just online. If this thing crashes... What happens to you guys? You know, what is there? Uh, how do you guys see that working? Yeah, like YouTube will not crash. It will not crash. <laughs> it did. It will not crash. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, about skit makers being very close, right? From our own day difference, we didn't need ourselves day to day. Yeah. Unlike movies where if you take like three months to produce or maybe like one month to produce a movie, yeah. right? Where you might not need everybody. You might just need one, two, three persons. This one, we didn't need ourselves like almost every day. You want to make a skit. You want to make his kid tomorrow, you're already thinking of Ebuka. Ah, Ebuka is going to play a role in this thing and he'll kill it. You're already next tomorrow. So you know how we dish out our kids like yeah. every day, every day, so every you have day. To keep working so you need to keep working together. Yeah. So it's something that we can't we can't even help. Now you guys have some of the highest interactions on social media. Mm. Sometimes even more than these mega superstar artists and actors. You go to a skit maker or content creators page and it's fifteen thousand comments. You're like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. But that speaks to the fact that you guys have a lot of people who like you, love you, look up to you and all of that, right? What sort of role do you think you guys played or play in the political space? Right, mm. you know, the kind of content you put out to keep people sensitized. It doesn't necessarily have to be partisan, but I mean, it could be. Yeah. But do you think there's a duty you guys owe now? Because a lot of the generation you influence are 20s, mm. early 30s, that space, you know, of mm. people who are still figuring themselves out, very passionate about the country sometimes, looking for direction on how to tackle these things. And there's been criticism, of course, of people like you and, you know, your colleagues about, oh, during the elections, you put even, you know, speak up or oh, take did, sides did, or whatever. Did, I That's why I said some of your colleagues. Yeah. You know, but do you think it's a duty you guys sort of owe? And I don't think it's a duty exactly. It's personal now. You can't force anybody to say yeah. stuff, right? But at the end of the day, if it's about sensitization, right, I knew that some of the content creators, I don't want to mention names, but I watched the videos from content creators urging people to get their voters card yeah. and urging people to vote right. I saw videos like that. I didn't, I didn't really see party videos, but I saw videos. Understand? Shout out to Macaroni. Macaroni made a lot of videos about the whole... Um, the whole political thingy, encouraging people to get voters card and all that. I did that too. Yeah. I did that and they, they came for me, but we thank God. <laughs> thank God. So the, the thing is, I, I think the skit making space is still very underrated. Very underrated. And I don't know why they're underrating it because there's money in the space, like a lot of money. And influence. Yes, and very huge influence. Like, like you said, 15,000 comments is no joke. 30K, 20K. So I don't know why it's being underrated. I think the only reason why it is being underrated is because it's a new industry. I think that's the only reason. Yeah, and people still like don't understand reason. maybe yeah, yeah. what to do with it. Yes, yes, please. You also did call out the AMVCs last year, didn't you? Sorry. <laughs> because I saw a lot of those headlines Sorry. back then, you know, because you weren't, you weren't nominated for the creative. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, at some point... Were you really hurt like, by it? Yeah, I was. I was. I yeah. was I you was. thought you deserved it? Yeah. I did. More than the people who nominated? I'm sorry, yes. yes. Why so? I'm so sorry. Ah, because I put in work now. That particular year, uh, I put in work more than the people that were nominated. I can't even lie. Like, no shades. Do man. they agree with you? I don't care if they do. It's personal, right? <laughs> so that's why I can only rant on my phone now. That's yeah. the only thing I can do. Right, I cannot go and fight. Why do you anybody. think you weren't nominated? I don't know. I, mean, I don't have any idea. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not lying. But at the end of the day, I got some awards too. And I'm grateful for the awards that I got. If I don't get an MVC, that's fine. That's fine. And um, recently, my colleagues got nominated and I'm rooting for them. 
right? I already like someone there. I'm like, go boy, go boy, he's my guy. So I don't even care. So I guess I was quite emotional. But now I'm so grown now that I don't even really care. I like the people that appreciate my stuff. Right? So an award doesn't really crown my effort. For but me. it would be nice. Very. Exactly. Yeah, you say, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's all good. It's all good. I know people love me and I'm fine with that. When you make uh, statements like that, do, do you find that it affects relationships? What kind of statements? Saying that you're better than people who are nominated. I don't care. I don't care. Like when you meet them, does it like, no, 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 no. Like it's not like I mention anybody's name. I mean, we know the people nominated. So uh, when you meet, so it's not like it's not like it's not like, it's not like I am better than the people. But as at that time, your content, that you one felt year, like... I did. I did a great job. I did a great job. I did a greater job. They know. They know. They know. They know. This is not me washing. They so know. not only should they have been nominated, you should have even won. Is what you're I don't. I don't need to win. I don't need to win. But I need to be nominated. Like in that space, I was like the hottest creator at that particular time. Yeah. You understand? I was like the hottest creator. I had some senior celebrities. You know, <laughs> everybody was here. Everybody was. It was this guy. <laughs> yeah. So I felt like it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. fair. They should have just nominated. Fair enough. You have a new single. Yeah. When I get small money, me self go jayo. <laughs> Champagne, Hennessy, oh. <laughs> yes, out. It's out everywhere. It's titled Small Money. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to all your plenty, plenty parts. Actor, comedian, yeah. skip maker, artist. What else, what, else, what else are you going to unleash no, on no, us? No, it's okay now. It's okay. No, but there's, there's many parts still. Hey, as I, as I, I would love to be a director. Okay. Uh -huh. I would love See, to yeah. be a director. But for life, just slow down. Make it not too much. Make it no good for me. See, because what you already do is sort of producing and directing. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course on a small course. scale. But so on a very larger scale, I would love to direct. Yeah. Do you enjoy acting or are you doing it just because? Be sincere. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, right, I think at some point when I started, I used to really enjoy acting. But yeah. acting, skit making, music is becoming too tasking for me. Call me for movie roles. Yeah. Call me, call me, call me. Call me. No, but it's, it's, it's quite tasking doing all of these things together. But I'm trying, I'm trying to manage it. All right. Congratulations, man. Good luck with everything. Thank man. you so Thanks much. Thanks for being here. We're all rooting for you. And Thank you. You will probably get many more awards than you even think of. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nasbo. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Now I'm joining the studio by superstar, <laughs> the voice himself. <laughs> Big man Rick Hassani, performing artist, recording artist. Hello, hello, hello. How hello. you doing? I'm good. Good I'm to good. see you, man. Same, You're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. There's so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, continued to just, your trajectory is very, very inspiring to mm. a lot of people. You know, what you've done with your music and how you've stayed true to what you believe in. How hard has that been though? Because it's easy to say, oh, I believe in myself and I'm going to do yeah. what I want to do. But in a space where there's constant pressure, mm -hmm. even if not overtly, yeah. to you know, toe the line of what is popular, mm -hmm. you know, how, how hard has that been? I think, um, I don't know if I try to do it. I just, I just do what, I, I just do only what I know how to do really well. Yeah. And it just so happens that it's different. You know, it, honestly, if I knew how to make pop songs, like the way the pop artists do it, that's what I'll be making. But I just don't know how to do it. Like, I really don't know how to do it. Yeah. You know, so I haven't been trying to make what I've been making. I've only just been doing what I know how to do well, which is what I make, so. Yeah, so that comes easier. It comes easier. But it then there's people who do that, yeah. you know, and, and it's not they realize that it's not... <laughs> He's not giving what he's supposed to give. So what are you doing differently? I really don't know. Because maybe maybe that's where maybe that's where grace comes in now. Is, yeah. is it? You know, I, I really don't know what it is. Like I, I'm I'm a very grateful guy. You know, like um, I know there are a lot of people that that try to make the kind of music that I make in a bid to make good music. You know what I mean? And yeah. appeal to that good music audience, and it just doesn't. You know, it just doesn't work for them. Um, 
I'm, I'm just here being grateful and I'm just, I'm just happy for it. Yeah, as you should. Yeah, yeah. as you should. Yeah. I mean, you, I, I was watching your, your social media, of course, over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You spent quite a bit of time outside the country. Yes. You know, uh, performing, yeah. signing interesting deals. You know, why, why are you are trying to cast me? <laughs> you guys trying to come I'm a very, very low-key private guy. And I love no, it. <laughs> it's, it's very inspiring, you know, because yeah. a lot of these younger artists who are coming through now who are not doing mm -hmm. Afrobeats. Yeah. First of all, why is everybody suddenly running away from the Afrobeats tag? What's going on? I don't What's know. happening with your colleagues? I really, Nobody I, wants to be called an Afrobeats artist anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just feel like artists are feeling like, you know, they are, being, they are now being boxed. Okay. You know, they feel like, you know, whatever they make now, just because they are coming out of Nigeria and, and Africa, they are now Afrobeats. Even if they make R&B, even if they make rock, it's like, oh, this Afrobeat guy. And, and, I, and I feel their pain in that way. But me, I've, I've never been tagged uh, Afrobeats. I've just been Rick Hassani, you know? Yeah. So I, I, that doesn't affect me at all. Yeah. I don't feel any kind of way about it. Anyway, so back to my question, my, I guess my point really is, you know, someone who's doing music that they want to do yeah. in a climb like this uh, at a time when Afro beats is what the world seems to be excited about, you know, mm. but you are still finding your way through all of this. You know, I've always wondered, is that a strategy? Does it happen organically? How does this, how do you start putting these things in motion? You know, <laughs> to say, you know what, okay, I'm going to, this is where I'm trying to head, even if you guys are not ready to listen to me. Okay, the way I live my life, Ebuka, is I, I, I want to be very proud of myself when yeah. I'm older. Me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want, I'm not trying to please anybody. Like, you know, when, when you get older, when you look back at your life, you know, you, you become more mature and you look back at your life as yourself. You don't look at it through anybody else's lenses. You know what I mean? Uh, but when you're younger, it's easy to be distracted and do what this person wants or do what's cool now. You know what I mean? But me, I'm very zeroed into, I want to be proud of myself when I'm older. So I'm making decisions that I want to make for myself. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what helps me to just make what I want to make, how I want to make it, and just hope that people connect with it and connect with that energy. Are you worried for Nigerian music? I, I, it's, yes. I guess it's <laughs> weird to ask that yeah. at a time when everybody's excited about Nigerian music. Yeah. But there's also this other side where, okay, the whole not being wanted to, call, to be called an Afrobeat artist is one thing, but there's suddenly the belief that Nigerians no longer dictate the sound, you know, because of all these international deals being signed, uh, you know, all these labels abroad are now dictating mm -hmm. what people put out, you know, almost forgetting uh, what okay. the core of our music is, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know if you are guilty of that since you are now international as well. <laughs> you know, is it something we should be worried about? And generally, just the way the space looks now. Yeah. There are people who say oh, it's an all commas affair, everybody is just coming in. But at the same time, you also wonder isn't that what it should be? Mm -hmm. is, that, is, it, is it being an all commas affair a bad thing? I guess it's a multi layered question. But it's yeah, just, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me explain how I'm worried about Nigerian music. Okay. Nigerian music in the Afrobeat space has been, we have been undefeated for years. Okay. Like no other, like it, it has been, once it's Afrobeat, it's, it's Nigerian music. Like our guys are top 10, you know what I mean? And I feel like because of that, we, the, the, the quality of music might start dropping because now more people want to get in, you know what yes. I mean? So the quality is really dropping. Like. Like back in the day, like hit songs were, were serious music. Like boys were really coming at it. But now, almost anybody is just coming in. And if you turn on the TV, like, like what is the hit song now in Nigeria? Name five of them. Most of them are not very good music. That's just the truth. Like, I, I, and um, back in the day, it wasn't like this. You know what I mean? And um, I feel like because we've been number one for so long, we, we just feel like, they go feel they go feel No, just. You know what I mean? So everybody's just throwing their own hit song and throwing money behind it and throwing all these videos, music videos behind it. And the quality is really, really dropping. So that's how I worry yeah. for Nigerian music. And this is my piano influence. Honestly, that man. That has everybody on a chokehold. Bro. I mean, it's a great sound, but at the same time, it's like, is that our sound now? You see what I'm saying? And everybody is doing every, bro, everybody is doing it. Yeah. And they all have the money, they all have the swag, and you know what I mean? So it's scary, bro. It is. It is. What's coming for you in, this, in the coming months? Uh, what's the plan for Rick Hassani, um, your music uh -huh. this year, in the coming years? Um, what should we expect? 
Well, most immediately, I am now a judge on Nigerian Idol. So Congratulations. That's very interesting. <laughs> so it's starting tonight, actually, 7 p.m. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll be doing for the next... Um, it, it's, uh, Is that it's a scary gig? Because yeah, people's fate yeah. is kind of in your hands, right? And crushing a dream. Yeah, it's... Um, can be hard, guys. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I'm very happy I'm doing it. I'm very happy I'm in that position. I'm very happy somebody like me is in that position. You know what I mean? Like, um, because um, I take these things very seriously. And I'm very good at what I do. Like, you, you know, I'm, like, I, I'm, not, I, 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 I'm, not, uh, I'm not bragging. Talk I, talk. I am good at what you've been to my concerts, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, so I'm happy that somebody like me is actually a judge because I'm, like you can trust my 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 decisions more than it's not it's not gimmicks i'm not joking it's not i'm not trying to be entertaining you know i'm i'm trying to make sure the right singers go through so i'm happy that somebody like me is there like i, I it's, it's a job i i really love so much it's terrifying i honestly i'm scared like this evening i'm gathering my friends to to watch the first episode <laughs> in my house so hoping i don't say something that nigerians will drag me you know what i mean but there will be but, dragging there will yeah. be dragging but honestly i i'm so happy that, I, that I'm in that position. Yeah, congratulations on that. Thank Any you. new music coming? After the, your uh, judging life? Uh, yes. Anything we should be excited yes, about? Yes, yes, yes. An album this year for sure. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an album guy, so yeah. When? I don't know. You're, you're asking exactly. too much. <laughs> you can't be teasing us. You can't put um, much sugar in our mouth. Um, uh, it's going to be somewhere around summer. Okay. Around summer, June, July. Yeah. You've been doing a lot of traveling. What sort of yes. collaborations are we expecting? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, I, I was in Spain for, for Giorgio Armani. So yes. I, I work with Giorgio Armani. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Like, it's now a real, <laughs> it's a real thing. Like, I actually work for Giorgio Armani. You're an Armani, Armani boy. Like, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, um, I work for Giorgio Armani. I'm on a contract with them for, as a model, which is crazy. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? And, um, uh, and yeah, so that's what I've been traveling for. And I will be traveling for the next two years just around the world with, with Giorgio Armani. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations, man. I mean, I, I had an ass boy earlier, and it, it looks like we live, in an indo we live in a country now where, you know, you have to be multiple things at the same mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. you know, for this money to be plenty. Oh, yeah. You are hugely talented yeah. as a performing artist, so you might not need other, other parts to you. Yeah. But are there other parts to you that we don't know of? <laughs> Just in case we're missing anything. <laughs> I know. I think we have it all down. <laughs> Is there any... Yeah. I mean, the good, I wonder if you've been approached to do like acting, for example. Oh, yeah, things... yeah, I, I did. Um, exactly. Uh, a, a movie I was in called When Are We Getting Married. It was nominated for was an it, it was an invest in the movie. Yeah, 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 it was. It was, yeah. it was last, last year. Yeah. I want to do more movies, man. I really, really want to do. Yeah, one of my goals on my bucket list is, is to win an Oscar or be in an Oscar winning movie. That's one of my goals. So what I, is it about acting that interests you? You know what I really love? And I was saying this to my manager the last time. With music, um, when you're recording the song, for example, now, you're only as good as your mix engineer, or as good as maybe if you if you wrote the song with somebody, or you're as good as the instrumental. Like there's a lot more, um, um, there's a lot elements. more elements that are beyond your control that have to come together and just make you a great artist. But with acting, it's mostly you. But boy, on camera action, I will act well. You know what yeah, I mean? Like your and emotions then, are there. Yeah, you. even if you know you still have a director's director, and it's still an element that that determines how well you do the job. But at least most of it is under your control. So that's why I love acting. You know, I can go in there, read my lines. It's it's more, I'm I'm more responsible for for uh, for how well my acting comes out. So that's yeah. why I really love acting. I really do. Look at your leading man. You guys should, should, should come and act. Yeah, there's a movie. <laughs> write me a script right now. I've been saying these things. So you should write me a script right now. You know? Thank you very much, Rikasani. Musician, actor, fashionista, <laughs> global supermodel, yes, so. talent uh, show judge. So many things, man. Wow. It's, it's hard to keep up with you. But wow. good luck with everything. And Thank thanks so for much, being man. here today. Thank you. Thank and we can catch you, of course, he said tonight. Oh, um, yes. Tonight, 7 p.m. First episode of Nigerian Idol. First episode of Nigerian As a judge. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us today. And like I always say, you can follow the conversation on social media. Please use the hashtag Robin Minds when you send us a message. I'll see you next Sunday.